I remember when we were strong. The Viridian Outriders, a bold fraternity dedicated to preserving the safety of the needful traveler. Within my lifetime, I have seen us fall so far, replaced by the steel and gold of a king I once called friend. New threats arise though, and his cutlass and coin may not be enough to save our people. We're still here though, less than we were, but we're here and we'll help where we can. That is my oath. Hello, and welcome back to another path. My name is Chase, and I remain your GM. Today, our usual outriders have a bit of a break, and in their stead, a guest. You may know Johnny Stanton from a number of internet appearances, including his own podcast, Athletics Check, as well as several appearances on Dropout. You might also know him from the NFL as a fullback for the Minnesota Vikings and the Cleveland Browns. Johnny and I start off the episode talking a little bit about his upcoming D&D supplement, Sync, which you can check out over at get.syncrpg.com before we dive in and get to meet his character that will be joining the Outriders for the upcoming episodes. Thank you to our backers, Zan, Carlin, and Veronica for their support. If you like what you hear, consider donating to us at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia, and maybe try checking out some of the other shows on the network. And with that, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down another path. So, Johnny, welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no, this is absolutely awesome. You know, this has been a long time in the works. Glad we were finally able to make it happen. Me too. Yes, I've had... Um probably the busiest summer I've ever had because most of them have been dedicated to free time and football. <laughs> so now that I'm finally like out of football, you know, right. Knock on wood and I will not knock on wood. We'll see. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, it's been incredibly busy because I've Absolutely. got a lot going on with this, with this sync project. Yeah. Which uh, to that point, uh, let's talk a little bit about that because that's part of the reason you're here. Yes, you've been kind enough to allow me to be on the show to uh, promote this book that I've been able to work really, really closely with on some really good friends. Um, my buddy, who's a co-creator, Rick Eskevius, who I've known for years now, who has been my DM, I've DM'd for him. Uh, we have been co-DMs for campaigns. We have been co-writers. We live 10 minutes away from each other. And now finally, we're getting to work on something together in a, a very official capacity, uh, mm -hmm. as well as uh, a, a newer but just as close friend in Sam Rusk, who is an incredible tattoo artist. All mm -hmm. um, in, in case you haven't seen it in sync yet, it is uh, an American traditional tattoo art style, um, telling the story of pirates and dungeons and even more tattoos, uh, with magic items and story beats with tattoos coming at the center. So getting to work with the two of them has been an absolute dream as well as getting to bring hit point press into the fold, um, to, to bring us some legitimacy because we need that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, now we are from recording, we're about two months away from launch of our mm -hmm. Kickstarter, which is absolutely terrifying. Um, but you know, it's going to go great, right? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. You sent me the cover art probably like three or four months ago when we, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're first setting a date for all of this and it, it looks incredible. I am someone mm -hmm. who deeply, deeply appreciates, you know, the art and artistry that goes into TTRPG books. And I was actually sitting, uh, in lodge at the moment that you sent that. And I was like, I had to stifle myself. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm sitting in an officer position and I should not be making noise right now. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, it looks incredibly cool. Um, and, uh, to the point, uh, you know, we've got the, uh, Kickstarter coming out pretty soon. Uh, yeah. but more to the point when people are listening to this before that, uh, you're going to be at Gen Con. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be at Gen Con. Um, I don't know if people are going to be listening to this before San Diego <laughs> Comic Con the weekend before, but, um, we have a lot of stuff going on this summer. Like I, did I mention that it's a busy summer? Um, you did. we have, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have a live play of sync at both san diego comic-con and gen con uh we've got got people like jasmine bular we have swole initiative jay foster we have zach the bold diana of the rose oscar najam serena marie um uh, 
uh, AEW superstar uh, brand color. We've got some really, really cool people. Uh, who did I miss? Annika Sila from Hero Forge. Um, I, I don't want to miss anybody. We got incredible people at the two events between Gen Con and San Diego Comic Con, including some stuff, some events that like aren't don't even have to do with sync like my athletes and tabletop panel at san diego comic-con which is going to be a blast like i said it's going to be a super busy summer but in the most important thing probably of those things are the gen con live play at 9 p.m on friday night on the main stage who put us on the main stage uh i don't know it must have gone past some some eyes because who who's gonna let us up there but um we we need as many people to show up as possible tickets are only four dollars we're literally not making any money on that all that's going to gen con um so all we want is for people to learn about sync and to follow the newsletter and pay attention for when the kickstarter to come out um and i might as well give the plug right now if you go to get.syncrpg.com you will uh, have the sign up link to uh, check out our uh, our pre-launch um, basically pledge. You will be able to pledge $1 and have an opportunity to get this really, really cool uh, pin that has a liquid core with like this glittering background behind a ship in a bottle. Super, super oh. cool. I cannot wait to have it in my hand because that's, that's Sam Rusk's artwork. I mean, I, I don't know else, how else to say it. It's just awesome all the time. So um, if you want, it's literally $1 if you follow through with the pledge. So you never get pins for $1 anymore. They're all like $5, $10 and this is just one dollar if you go if you follow through with pledging to sync so uh go to get.syncrpg.com to find out a little bit more about the project and to see some of the artwork that is that that's phenomenal absolutely uh i will be there at the gen con uh live show thank you i'm also going to be at gen con i'm running a couple of games for nerd burger games i'm running a, a couple games of capers that i believe i still have some open slots for and die laughing which has been sold out i believe since like the second day tickets were available that one goes pretty quick typically awesome. uh but yeah i am looking uh looking forward to seeing y'all on the main stage there appreciate it and if you want to have an opportunity to be able to play in a game uh, of sync from one of the creators my co-writer Rick Escavius is running, I think, four games per day, except for Sunday, just because they close early. But mm -hmm. um, you can sign up uh, online and Gen Con events under Sync um, Table Game, I think is what it's called. I forget exactly what it is. If you search Sync, um, you were probably one of the ones that show up. But <laughs> there are tons of seats open if you want to stop in on one of those games. Awesome. All right. So speaking of games, want to play one? Let's do it. The rain of an early spring day splashes down serenely on Miller's Pond. A joke of a name. A massive lake dubbed for Marshall Millenway Miller, an eccentric baron from some years ago. It's fed by the Irritan River from the northwest. It's up the Irritan River, down one of its many nameless tributaries that we find a shack. It sits high on stilts, with steps leading down from the door, and a dock leading out over the water creaky in construction, but clearly resilient in age. The gray light of a rainy day falls into the cabin, creating bright wooden islands in pools of shadow. Johnny, who do we see and what are they doing? You see a wizened old man hunched over, not incredibly old, but you can see that his skin wears the age far more than his eyes do. His eyes uh, looking down at this fishing line that he is trying to pull the knots out of um, and trying to reorganize into his spool. You see that he bears the dark gray but bluish in tone skin of an air genasi. Um, he has his long wispy white hair pulled into a bun tied up against his head. He's shirtless with uh, his you know, dark brown leather wading boots leading up his thigh. And he uh, he's just muttering to himself, maybe some some old shanty song that he used to have somebody else sing for him. What is his name? This is Court Gurney. Rain patters on the windows until there is a moment of quiet, a profound quiet that only a person well seasoned in combat knows as the drum roll of something. What does Court do? I think like the stillness of the air before a storm, the hair on the back of his neck begins to rise. 
and he feels that electricity on the air um, before gently setting down the spool of uh, fishing line and standing up to grab a, um, a fishing knife, just a small four inch blade that he tucks into his waistband and takes a look to the window, pulls back the shade to take a, a little gentle but wary look. Go ahead and roll perception. That's an eight plus six, 14. Court looks out the window and uh, he sees down on the edge of the dock a creature that he is familiar with and knows exactly what kind of trouble they bring. Bipedal with multiple arms and a large yellow carapace. And he looks around as a mean lock looks over its shoulder. These things are not uncommon in the swamp. Uh, they always mean trouble. They are very hungry flesh eaters and uh, you are a source of that. Hmm. What is hiding slightly better, but not by much, um, are a pair of vine blights that are blending in near the trees. Uh, these things uh, typically scavenge after a mean lock has finished its work. I think I push the door open and say, damn it, Jimmy, I told you to not come back here. I told you if you jump up on this dock again, I'm going to put you, I'm going to have to stick you. I'm going to have to stick you, Timmy. You better get back in that water. <sighs> I didn't know what to expect, and I am delighted. I didn't turns know what to full- expect either. Excellent. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Uh, this thing turns fully over its shoulder and shitters at you and begins a charge. Uh, I need you to make me a quick insight check before mm-hmm. anything else. Not particularly good insight. Let's see. Okay. 14 plus 3, 17. You know that these things have the ability to essentially teleport into shadow. You think this thing is going to try and jump behind you. Timothy, don't you teleport on me. Don't you don't you stop. Don't you turn around on me. And it is gone from your vision. And at this moment, let's roll some initiative. All right. Awesome. Oh, it's another eight um, plus three, 11. Excellent. Um, Should I talk a little bit about the character class that I'm playing? Yeah, please do. Sweet. This is a sync original. Um, We have four original subclasses. Don't tell anybody else, but this is my favorite subclass. This is the Mistbreaker Ranger. Uh, The Mistbreaker Ranger gives this, um, you know, kind of the theming of fishermen out in, you know, going out into the mist and venturing out into waters that other people are are afraid of, whether it's superstition or just having been uncharted. This uh, this subclass is all about kind of mastering those waters and lording control over them. It, you'll you'll learn a little bit more about the features of this subclass, um, but I, I am very excited about getting to show off some of these abilities because I think they're pretty fun and pretty different from what other rangers can do. Absolutely. So I have good news and bad news for you. Uh Uh, The bad news is that the mean lock is going first. Mm -hmm. The good news is that you do go ahead of everybody else. Okay. So that mean lock is going to absolutely just behind you. Uh, However, because you had that insight, you are not surprised by this at all. Wonderful. However, as it nears you, I do need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay, okay, I'm... Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, 19 on the die, plus 3, 22. You're fine, this thing yeah. has a fear aura. It's not... I've seen Timmy uh, before, I know he. I know his wiles and tricks. 100%. You don't scare me, uh, Timmy. Uh, and Timmy is absolutely uh, going to beef it, uh, only <laughs> uh, hitting an 8 on the die. Well, an 8 <laughs> total, so I don't think that's going to do much to you. I think what I do is I wheel around on my heel just as Timmy's arm, I assume, one of his many arms is mm-hmm. coming down on me. I um, I use a bit of this hardened air that I can coalesce, this hard, this, this physicalized mist that I can coalesce in front of me to try to back myself up and block his arm. For sure. Uh, yeah, he is absolutely uh, stopped by you. And now it is your turn. Wonderful. I am going to pull my hand into the air, and just as I kind of summoned this this bit of shield to protect myself, I uh, I, I coalesce a a spear, a harpoon in front of me, made out of the very mist of this river. I 
take a step back, not reeling out of range, and two-handed try to gut Timmy uh, with this harpoon. I'm gonna roll the hit. What do Please I have? Do. Plus six, I think. Ooh, it's a 14, dirty 20. Ooh, yeah, absolutely. Roll damage. Cool. Um, that is. So this is the harpoon that is part of uh, the Mistbreaker subclass. I do a D eight of damage at seventh level. Excellent. I'm allowed to tell them I'm at seventh level, seventh level, right? It's not a big deal. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, great. That's a four um, plus three to my dex. So seven plus two to my thrown weapon fighting style, which is nine. Excellent. Uh, so that's nine points of damage. What I'm going to do is... Timmy, you think you're the only one who can teleport around here. And I'm going to um, misty step back into my cabin. A trail of of this mist kind of lazily flowing upon the air, still in my grasp, attached to the harpoon that is now stuck in Timmy. And I'm going to throw another at him as my second attack. Excellent. Oh, that one's probably not going to hit. That is a 10 to hit. Nah, that's not going to cut it. So um, to, to walk people through this subclass, uh, that is the tether ability of the Mistbreaker. You have a tether that attaches to creatures that you hit with your harpoon. Um, and this harpoon, you can just wield out of thin air. You don't have to have a, a weapon on you. You can just throw it. And um, based on which tidal bond you choose, the storm, the siphoned, or what I've chosen called the riptide, you have different abilities using this tether based on how many tethers you have connected to this monster. So right now I only have one because I only hit with once and I already used my bonus action, so I can't do anything on this turn, but that's my turn. Excellent. All right. Uh, that is going to take us down to the vine blights. I'm going to try to get like cover within the window that I just peeking out of earlier. Absolutely. These things, they're essentially like humanoid vine creatures mm -hmm. that start to uh, move towards the cabin uh, a little bit closer and closer. However, um, there's only room enough in the door for one person and Timmy has fully taken it. Sure. Uh, so they are not really able to uh, easily slip past. Um, so, uh, you've, you've created for better and for worse, a very healthy bottleneck. I love bottleneck. You know, I love a bottleneck as a ranged fighter. It's it, look, what's not to love, <laughs> except for the fact that, uh, Timmy oh. is about to just walk through sure, it because sure, sure, now sure. it's his turn. So he does walk in closing the space between himself and you, and he is going to make uh, another attack against you. Uh, that's probably going to do it at a, uh, 23. Yes, that'll do it. Uh, it'd be weird if it didn't. Uh, and that is going to be seven damage on you. Okay. Go ahead and make me a constitution saving throw. 17. Perfect. You're I'm rolling good. good on these saving throws. That's excellent. I'm sure that'll run out soon. <laughs> uh, but now it is your turn. Sweet. Um, okay. I am going to take a step back deeper into my cabin, uh, risking the opportunity attack if you want to make it. Okay. That is uh, going to be a solid 11, which I don't that think is going to do will much. not hit. Um, I'm able to kind of use wisps of mist to kind of give him an idea like where I am, but kind of kind of just deacon him out, take a step mm -hmm. back. I'm going to throw two more um, harpoons at him. Let's see. That is a 15 plus six and a oh, second one's not going to hit. That's a two on the die. Oh, um, so I'm going to roll a D8. Seven uh, plus five is 12 points of damage. Healthy. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to do my Riptide Tidal Bond ability uh, to pull him closer to me. I believe I'm probably about 10 feet away from him right now. Once I yeah. pull him into melee range with me, because I can pull him five feet per tether that I have in him, which is two. So I pull him five yeah. feet closer to me because that's all there's, there's left to, with room. And I'm going to use the harpoon that I coalesce out of, or I, actually, no, I'm going to pull the knife out of my waistband. See, you know, check out mm -hmm. knife. Um, and <laughs> I'm going to uh, attack him again using an immediate melee attack that has no action as part of it. So excellent. That is, please hit, thank God. <laughs> I do the cool thing. Let me do the, uh, that's a plus six, 12 uh, to 18. 18. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. Awesome. Awesome. What's very fun about this part is that when you pull him closer to you, you're kind of gutting the fish as it gets closer to you. That's not only the weapon damage, but plus an extra 2d6. 
So I'm going to roll. It's a two on the D4. That's a three on one D6, and that's a five on the other D6. So that's 10 damage in total, plus my dexterity bonus of three. So that's 13 points of damage on that dagger attack. How do you want to dispatch Timmy? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chase. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wanted to do that so badly. Um, I yank on it and say, Timmy, I told y'all. And then I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull him closer to me. I'm gonna pull out the dagger, the little tiny fishing knife that I use to just gut fish on a normal day. And I'm going to stick it into his carapace. And like a lobster, I'm going to just un unsheath the carapace that is around him, letting the meat fall on the floor wetly of this cabin. Phenomenal. <laughs> I love this. And then I think what I'm gonna do is as quickly as I can, <laughs> you, you decide if I can. I'm gonna shuck a claw of, of of Timmy and toss it out into the the porch or out past, mm -hmm. past the porch of my cabin, letting the vine blights um, have their their way with it if they sh so choose. Absolutely, these things have a five intelligence, so they are largely operating on instinct. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, technically can speak, which is something I found out as I was researching <laughs> these things. Um, but it is only when a, an entity that is controlling them speaks through them. Yeah, so I'm going to yank an arm off and I'm going to toss it out and say, uh, usually the claw meets the, my favorite part of the, the what do you call it? One of these Timmy's before. <laughs> it's usually my favorite part, but I'm going to I'm going to let the vine blights have it. The claw skitters out and the vine blights, these five and a half, six foot tall creatures of plant matter just kind of move towards it. I'm just going to close the door, shut it. You shut it. And then a moment later, you hear a telltale creaking on your stairs. A pause. Huh. And then a. Uh, Knocking on the door. I didn't know Von Blatt could uh, knock on doors now, but um, yes, Mr. Von Blatt, sir. And I open up the door. And uh, you open the door and not rather than the Vine Blights, who are still firmly out on the dock enjoying their snack, is a face you haven't seen probably in quite a few years. It is one of your old Outrider buddies, Luca. I think I look Luca up and down don't really meet his gaze uh, I say how'd you find me and I turn around into the cabin and walk and s start sitting back hunched over the fishing line again to start working on it again but I don't close the door in his face uh, Court I've had a rough idea of where you were for a while now I mean, you didn't go that far off the grid well I guess my reputation has done a better job than my hiding skills of keeping people away then i respect folks privacy typically how you been hmm um doing just fine up here on my own clearly and he looks out at the vine blights they're just facing on timmy back there don't you worry about it if i was worried i'd have sent someone sooner yeah well why are you sending somebody now well i'm not sending someone i came myself Partially because I'm curious at how you've been. I mean, like I said, I respect your privacy. I understand why you bailed, but, you know, I liked you. was worried. You don't have to worry about me. Well, worry is a strong word, but still. Call it curiosity, then. More to the point, we got a situation brewing. I'm not sure if you, if you make it to town or any town very often. Or... I don't go back to town. Fine. <sighs> But look, Court, you are the only person I think that actually might be qualified to help the team out with this. I'm not a ranger anymore, Luca. There's always something brewing. You can get one of your own. I can, but, well, frankly, this is shaping up to be a pretty interesting fight. And, well, you always did like interesting. You know what I like more than an interesting fight? What's that? A simple life. Just leave me be. Look, I promise... Outrider's honor. So much that means. And you know from me it means something. Go on. About coming up on a year ago now, a bunch of my team found this uh, underground city about a oh, day and a half west of here. Completely underground. One of the wizards found it doing magic. Whatever, doesn't matter. This place is unlike anything any of us have ever seen. All of the buildings are made of this weird 
kind of flaky black material that apparently used to be a mushroom at some point. A bunch of weird magic crap happened and the whole place is filled with these creatures that change and morph called approximations. At least that's what we're calling them. They're twisted in some kind of way. That's interesting enough and we've got folk that can handle that kind of thing. However, we've very long story short, there are some motes of energy that are or, or magic or whatever going from points of the city, blocking off the center of this t- city. We can't get in. We're sure that whatever is going on, whatever happened here was caused at that city center. We've gotten a couple of them loose. However, there's one that's sitting in a lake. And every time we've tried to send someone out there, well, they haven't come back. You are uniquely qualified. I've lived my long life to know that getting to best the sea monster doesn't really last as long as one would hope. Not really in looking for glory. No, I don't think you're looking for glory. I think you're looking for something to break things up just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. And, you know, might do you good to see what the Outriders have been since certain someone's not been involved. Hmm? Sterling hasn't been around in ages. Hmm. So I guess I've been out here all alone for no reason then. Well. Nobody wanted to come tell me? Well, he is king, so you oh, know. Oh, well, then. Uh, yeah, that's civilization, though. And yeah. I'm not going to say his fingerprints aren't on things. He's actually done a surprising amount to financially back the exploration which is weird I can't trust that I can't be working under him well you're not working under him just his coin back in the operation he hasn't sent a whole lot of other folk he he trusts me keep an eye on things and does he know you know we've hmm does he know that you came to me <laughs> of course not you best not tell him man barely takes my letters and there's other stuff going on that has him. There's movement on the borders. Hmm. And you would know that movement on the borders means war might be brewing. Sterling is clearly otherwise occupied. I'm sure the, the king has more important stuff to think about than an old fisherman. And anyways, one Timmy means more Timmies are coming along soon. So I don't really want to have my own war against a army of Timmies out there on the mm-hmm. dock. So I best be going anyways. I don't have much here anyway. Fair enough. You're welcome to uh, house back up at the crypt if you'd like for uh, whatever time you need, but uh, I'm actually going to be heading on out to uh, the dig site if you want to come with. Oh, sure. Let's stress these old bones. <sighs> You are not that much older than me. How did you get so old? The water ages you. I know people say that it keeps you young. I've never experienced that. It just ages you. But I love it too much to give it up. You know that, Luca. I would never dream of telling you to do so. It's going to send me to an early grave. A watery one, but an early one. (laughs) Well, I'm thinking thinking you're tougher than that. Well, I've grown soft in these years. Well, not sending you out alone. I've got a crew that'll be going with you. You're Cecil, not going to come? Is, you're not coming? Who can I trust outside of you, Luca? You know you're the only one. Well, for one, I'm high captain now. I'm not calling you that. And I'm not asking you to. And I'm not sending you alone. I'm sending you with the crew. I'm sending Cecil out there with you. and You know they're mm-hmm. good for it. Half the time. All the time. Now. They've grown since you left. And well, since I've pulled them off desk duty, they've maybe gotten better than they've ever been. And I'm going to send uh, uh, this uh, halfling, a uh, Harper Talk, out there with you as well. Uh, they are probably one of the best crafters we've ever had. They did this. I don't know how they did it, but like she somehow got metal to think. She made this tortoise and it's don't moving be, around. Don't and- be saying these willy nilly uh, words to me. I don't know what that means. Look, you'll get it as soon as you see it. But no, we'll send in her. And uh, we're going to send Arabin Cronin out there, too. Uh, he's newer, still at the Outrider rank. He'll probably end up being a knight at some point. But look, I fought alongside all of these guys. I'm not sending you in with an untested crew. 
these folks, they're the real deal. Yeah, well, will they think that I am? Well, Cecil will. Cecil remembers, yeah. And the other two, well, if they don't, they'll learn pretty quick. You've always been a fast teacher. Luca gives you a bit of a smile at that. You know how long it took you for to, to give me a smile. Anyway. All right, well, get busy living or get busy dying. <laughs> All right, let's get going. Luca helps you pack up uh, whatever it is that you need assistance with, and the two of you take off into a dreary, rainy day. And that seems like a good a place as any for us to leave it for now. Nice. That was fun. Excellent. Yeah. I, I did not know what court was going to be like before I decided that Timmy Timmy was going to be a whole character. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was, you know, you, you sent me the character description. It's like, OK, like I've got a couple characters around this age. I can't wait to see how this is. It's like, nope, this is perfect. We've we have a solid curmudgeon in the group. And I am I am here for Who doesn't it. Doesn't love a curmudgeon. It's it's so good every time. Always. Absolutely. Thank you for having me at your table. It's an honor. Absolutely, Johnny. This has been a blast. I'm looking forward to continuing to have you at the table for the next couple of episodes of Another Path. Um, Like I said, I believe uh, this episode is slated to drop on the 24th of July. So just enough time for people to pick up those tickets to go and see Sync Live at Gen Con. And potentially, actually, that's enough time for San Diego Comic Con, yes, if I'm remembering right. If you right. are in the Southern California area, you go to San Diego Comic Con. Um, we will be Thursday at noon mm-hmm. for Sync Live. And uh, like I said, we've got some really, really fun uh, creators and just fun people on stage with us. It's going to be our first live show, which is going to be wild. Um, also, if you are a fan of the Mistbreaker, or if you like the sound of a Spellskin Wizard, a College of Tide Song Bard, or a Buccaneer Fighter, you can get uh, pre-made character sheets online at SyncRPG.com. That is different. Let me be very clear. That is different than get.SyncRPG.com. Um, it, we might have even forwarded um, SyncRPG.com to get SyncRPG.com. Um, hopefully, you can check it out. We will. You have character sheets that are made that were made available to uh, people who picked up Sync um, Treasures of Deep Grotto from Free RPG Day. Um, but it gives you a, an idea of what the Storm title bond looks like on the Mistbreaker mm-hmm. Ranger, as well as the third level abilities for um, all of the other subclasses. So awesome. uh, if you like that kind of thing, I know I'm a big fan of testing out new subclasses and um, the people who played them have had a really, really great time. And if you guys play them, let us know at Crimson Herald Games um, uh, on Instagram or Twitter, uh, because that's where you can talk to us. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, looking forward to to that and looking forward to having you on for uh, the next couple of episodes as we celebrate the uh, Sync Kickstarter going. Heck yeah. Thanks so much, Chase. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and our network at ghostlightmedia.net. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash ghostlightmedia, or by giving us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcatcher will let you. You can find Johnny on Twitter and TikTok at Johnny Stanton IV, and myself at TQ Loudly. Again, to reserve your Storm in a Bottle pin for a dollar, and to find out more about one of the coolest looking TTRPG books on the horizon, pop over to get.syncrpg.com. We'll be back in two weeks. And until then, remember, never hurts to ask. This has been a Ghostlight Media Production.